Hey guys, Barbecue Rockstar here. Starts out with a couple of them bad boys right there. So guys, tonight is going to be a very simple video. Hopefully you'll get something from it. We're going to feature a cut of beef that has never been done on this channel before. It's a product I've been working with probably about 15, 20 years since I first found out about it. Most all the barbecue people watching this and the cooks, they're going to know what this is. But tonight, guys, we're going to do it in a little bit different manner. So guys, if you'll stick around and watch this, hopefully you'll get something out of it. Go get a barley pop. See you in a few. Okay guys, so for the video here today, we are, for the first time ever, on the Barbecue Rockstar Cooking Show. We are going to proudly work with our Flat iron, that's right guys. This comes out of your shoulder clod there, chuck, some people call it, shoulder clod, whatever. Um, it's a it's a pretty firm muscle, guys. It is its own muscle, this is the way it looks. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is on the top of the shoulder. Um, so this is actually be uh, just above your uh, like terrace major and all of that, I believe. I'll have to double check that. Um, I used to know all my muscle breakdown on the chuck, eight-way chuck, but it's been years, guys, so please forgive me on that. Uh, anyway, it's a beautiful piece of meat, guys. What we're going to do is we're going to get this out of the packaging. And what we're going to do is, <laughs> don't shoot me, guys. We're going to hit it with a little bit of A1. No, not after we cook it, guys. Before we cook it. We're going to spread that all over. We're going to hit it with a little bit of uh, Himalayan pink sea salt. Okay, we're going to hit it with a little bit of 32 mesh ground black pepper and a little bit of, what is it, at? green Cholula. Just a little, little bit, guys. Just a little bit. Don't turn off the TV yet. And I'll let you know what this bacon grease is all about here in a minute. But, guys, here's your showstopper, okay? This is called a jacquard machine. We're going to take the the plastic cover off that. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 We're going to poke holes all in that once we get all those seasonings on there. We're then going to let this muscle sit unexposed, just like that, in the refrigerator. Oh, wait. Hmm. John, you don't have a refrigerator. The compressor went out last week. Oh, hmm. That's right. Yeah, guys, I've been working out of that little red cooler over there. That's my refrigerator. <laughs> Has been for over a week. Um, we will let this sit out on the countertop for about 30 minutes. All those seasonings that we put on there before are going to start weeping down in those holes. We're hoping that flavor will transfer thusly. Then we're going to come over here, guys, and we're going to throw it on that bad boy at about 400. I think that's about as hot as I can get. That's about 4, 425. And we're going to throw some grill marks on it and see what we come up with. So, guys, if you <laughs> if you haven't finished that first barley pop, go get you a second and a third. You're going to need it. Guys, uh, so we got our uh, flat iron uh, steak out here. Very beautiful piece of meat. Very lean, as you can see. There's no real fat to speak of. Uh, over here, it's been just trimmed absolutely amazing uh very little marbling in this uh, although it is a chuck product uh, very little marbling guys so we're gonna have to help it out you guys probably already know chucks are very high in flavor and they're tender but not when you grill them flavor in a bottle guys i have not i don't think i've ever bought a bottle of a1 steak sauce in my entire life i don't think i have seriously uh, I know I've not consumed much of this stuff except when, well, let's see if this is going to come out. Except when I um, used to make a lot of beef jerky. This was a prime, uh, it makes a great marinade or a key component for your marinade if you're ever going to make beef jerky. A1 steak sauce, man, has got it going on for flavor. And so what we're going to do, if I can get this come out of here, guys, is we're just going to show you how we're going to maximize our effort uh, to get the most flavor in this guy as possible. We just take that A1, we smear it on here liberally, okay? Pretty liberally, right? Get all your sides and all that, okay? No big deal, guys. Don't freak out. I've been here before. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, guys, here is we're going to go ahead and put a little bit. Now, we'll wait and do that. We'll, we'll go. I'll show you the, the back roads, okay? But this is the front roads. Jacquard machine, guys. If you've never used one of these, be very careful. They can hurt you. 
Remember those medieval torture tests you read about in school? Well, this is a modern day version of it. Very, very sharp stainless steel tips, guys. But that's what we need. We're gonna take it right here. We're gonna press down evenly every square inch of this chuck roast. I'm having to press pretty much as hard as I can, but as evenly as I can, guys. And now we're gonna come back in a checkerboard pattern. And we're gonna do it this way. So we're gonna cross hatch what we just did. So what we're doing in essence, guys, is we are breaking up those muscle fibers and we are injecting flavor every step of the way. Some of those restaurants that you think have beautiful tender steaks, well, how do you think they get them so tender? A lot of restaurants do this with their fajita meat, especially. You know, they use flat meat, skirt meat, or uh, flat meat. Um, some people use picanha, yeah. But uh, that's generally how they're going to do that. If you see any silver skin, guys, just you can kind of cut that off if you want to. Any little sinew, right, gristle, go ahead and let's knock that off, okay? Dogs could eat that. They'll love it. So, okay, so what we've got here, guys, we did one side, right? We did three different directions on our uh, jacquard machine. Same thing on this side, guys. Okay. All we're doing right now, guys, is we're just going to cover this thing just like we did on the front. And we're going to go two different directions. Three different directions, I'm sorry, with our jacquard machine. Now, some people would argue, and I would agree with them. John, you're poking a million holes in that meat. It's going to dry out, man. It's going to weep out all its blood. No, it ain't. No, it ain't, Chachi. You want to know why it ain't? Because we're going to cook it hot and fast, guys. We're going to make this medium rare. So we're going to bring it up to about 130 when we pull it. 120, 130, somewhere in there. This is not a very thick steak, guys, so it doesn't need to uh, rest forever. But there's a lot of blood in this particular muscle. And I can tell by how hard I'm, I'm having to press down, guys. Not a very tender cut of meat. Okay, so now what we've done is we got all that on there. Now what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to hit this with a little bit of 16 mesh black pepper. Okay. Not have to get stupid with it, but you know, just help help a brother out. Freshly ground. Himalayan pink salt. And all we're gonna do, just like our barbecue guys, you've seen me do it a hundred times, just gonna smash that in. Smash that in. Just like in barbecue, a lot of people use a binder. Well, we kind of did here, really. All we did was we used that Heinz fit or that uh, A1 there, guys. That was our binder. And look how we got that. Uh, look how we got that uh, salt and pepper to stick there. Just flip it over, guys. Let's do the same thing, shall we? Let's just do the same thing, guys. Very gentle. Okay, we're just trying to get a little extra. A little extra loving on it. Okay. Now, normally, guys, I would hit it with a little bit of uh, uh, garlic powder and onion powder, but I think since we're using the A1, I think we're going to be okay. Now, off camera, just behind you here, guys, we've got the grill coming up to heat. It's not quite hot enough, but when it is, we're going to throw this bad boy on, and we'll be right back with you guys. Stick around. So the last step here will be to just add a little bit of, like I said, that green flavored Cholula. Okay. I'll tell you what else we're gonna we're gonna add too. Just one second. Just add a little bit of that. What's that here sauce? Now what we're gonna do here, just like before, guys. We're just going to rub that in, okay? We're gonna let this sit out here for about 30 minutes like that. 
I'm gonna flip this over to the other side. We're gonna let this sit out here about 30 minutes. Then we're gonna come back with paper towels. We're gonna dry all this off. So basically we're gonna just, we're gonna be removing some of the rub, that's fine. But we want all that moisture pretty much off of here. So I'll flip this over guys and we'll be right back. Okay guys, so this next filming segment is gonna be kind of difficult. <laughs> it's gonna be kind of difficult. <laughs> we're gonna try to make it work for you guys. Okay, now guys, uh, I did go back and I blotted it uh, once the uh, meat has rested on this cutting board a little bit. I don't know if you can tell, it's probably a little bit drier. That salt, guys, has pulled some of the moisture out of the meat, right? What we're trying to do is get all the water out and do what's called a um, aging a la minute. In other words, you want to age this steak in a very quick amount of time, draw that moisture out, concentrate the beef flavors, and then there you have it. So let me see if I can't switch the camera over on the fly here, guys. Bear with me. Bear with me. Do this uh, on the fly here. Sorry about the camera, guys. I'm doing this uh, one-handed and by my, <laughs> by my lonesome. By my little lonesome. Let's see how we can do this here. Okay. So you see the grill there in the foreground. We're going to simply put this bad boy... Thusly, okay. You can hear the sizzle. You hear that, Ethel? They're playing our song. I wish you guys could smell the smells coming off that grill. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to finish uh, finish this first side, and when we go to flip it, I'll bring you back, okay? So here's, we got, we got it flipped over, guys. We just rotate 180 degrees, got our little cross hatches there, best we could. And a decent caramelization, uh, not probably as much as, well, I know for a fact it's not as much as I would have gotten outside, but, you know, we had to be careful. We had some sugars in there and some vinegar and all that, so we had to be careful how we treat this piece of meat. Uh, it has shrunk up considerably, guys. I mean, that thing drew in like a mofo, man. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut, uh, cook this side, do another 180 degree turn that way, pull it off. We're going to let it rest while we do our sides. Be back in a minute. So for our veg tonight, well, what I thought we'd do is we'd do some veggie spirals. Uh, I've got butternut squash here. And then the other one we are, we've already cooked is the, um, the broccoli uh, spirals. Pretty cool little invention if it uh, actually looks like the picture says it has no sauce or seasoning. <laughs> Folks, you know here at the Barbecue Rockstar, we don't even use their seasonings anyway. We got our own stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, cook some of this up and be back just like this. Okay guys, so you see we've got our, got our uh, spaghetti squash, not spaghetti squash, I'm sorry, butternut squash here in the pan. We went ahead and we drained off all the water and this is what we're left with. It says, if you want, you can saute it at the end with a little bit of olive oil. I don't think so, folks. We got butter, baby. Throw some butter. Remember that, remember that bacon grease I was talking about earlier? <laughs> folks, you know what makes everything better. Butter and bacon, baby. And here we go. We're just going to saute this around. No salt, no pepper, guys. You know, the squash has an inherent sweetness and a beautiful color, and it's very, very good for your body. Uh, loaded with beta carotene, just like carrots, broccoli, things like that, which, by the way, broccoli is our other side that you'll see in just a moment. But guys, how easy, huh? You open the bag, you put the frozen glob, what looks like it's going to be a bunch, in there with a medium-hot 
skillet, cover it with a lid, you wait 10 minutes, drain out the water, and this is what you get. Couldn't be easier. And it's a uh, Green Giant was the brand, so it's a pretty good brand, guys. It's not so cheap off-brand crap. You never know what you're getting, so. Of course, I've never had this before, so this could be crap too, but smells too good to be crap, guys. Okay, so we're just about done with this. I think all that frozen is out of there. I think it's cooked through. Just want to make sure. No going back once we... A lot of water and squash, man. You want to make sure you get all that out of there. Okay, guys. I'm going to go ahead and plate this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead or put that in its bowl and put the lid on it. I'm then going to slice our meat. I'm going to present it to you. Stick around, won't you? All right, guys. This is one of those eureka moments. Folks, you want to talk about perfect. And I'm talking about velvety soft, guys. That meat is, oh, I don't even want to cut it. You can almost pull it with a fork. Guys, come on. Are you kidding me? Let's go ahead and present this to you guys. But this is just, I had to show you that. Look at that color contrast and look how evenly it's cooked. Oh, babe, we'll be right back. Hey guys, here we go. This was the final product. Oh man, are you kidding me? You've got your broccoli spirals there, guys. Beautiful butternut squash spirals there. Remember guys, we uh, all we seasoned them with was butter and bacon grease. That's it. And we just sauteed them at the end with a little bit of butter and bacon grease. No salt, no pepper, no nothing. But guys, that's your money maker right there. That is your flat iron steak, guys. Everybody wants to talk about a bend test and all that in the brisket world. Well, let's do it in the steak world, too. Let's do that. Take a little bite here. Mmm. 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 Guys, please try this sometime. That A, that A1 steak sauce, guys, just really, it doesn't really overpower the meat at all. What it does, it gives it a little bit of substance, a little bit of flavor, a little depth of, of beefiness. And I was pretty liberal with the salt and the pepper too, but guys, I got to tell you right now, there's no smoke, there's no nothing. It's beef that I taste, like good Midwestern beef flavor, so... I hope you guys will try this. If you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comments section below. My email address, as always, is over in the About tab on my page. So appreciate you guys sticking in there, watching with us. Hope that you enjoyed the content. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. And push that bell with all notifications so you'll know when we go live next. Guys, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching.